Hey everybody, it's Zane from Drive the Mall, and today I've got quite the treat for you. I just got off the wildest train ride I have ever been on in my life. We rode the Mount Washington Cog Railway to the top of Mount Washington, the highest mountain in the Northeast, and as you can see, the weather is pretty nuts. So let's fast or rewind about an hour and enjoy the trip up. On at a very leisurely pace. And if you're waiting for the speed run, that will come into play on the way down. So faster during the descent. A whole five miles an hour. Or as I like to call us, the world's slowest roller coaster. So no crazy throw ride will go nice and slow. Keep things safe. The diesels, they go five both directions. So they'll lose us on the way up. Plus we have to stop for water and they do not. So they'll start out close to us and then slowly start to gap out and reach the summit quite a bit before we do. Now the summit is at 6,288 feet up there in the clouds at the moment. It's the highest point in all New England. Our track length is 2.9 miles. We start out at 2,700 feet here at the base. So that's a 3,500 some odd foot elevation gain very quickly, abruptly. So the grade is quite steep. 25% is our average grade which means we gain one foot of elevation per every four feet traveled forward in a horizontal plane. There are some sections that are considerably steeper that I'll mention as we traverse over them. Now your seats will make a lot more sense once we hit the mountain ahead and the track starts to pitch up. And it's also why the boiler mounted on the locomotive frame is tilted forward at that angle to compensate for the grade as well to ensure proper water coverage across the fire tube sheet inside. So I haven't quite done that yet, but we're constantly keeping an eye out. So I will say there is a very slight possibility that we may have to abridge the trip if this occurs. If that were to happen, everyone would be entitled to a partial refund. But now the overflowing water tank there is full of river water. The Ammanusik River will cross over on that bridge up ahead between the two trains in front of us. Ammanusik, which is also the nickname of our locomotive, translates roughly to small or narrow fishing place in the Abenaki Native American language. Now once we cross that switch up ahead, switch track, I will then sit down on the front platform for most of the trip. So you guys in the front have a better view as I don't make a very good window. I'll just stand up from time to time and a couple sections that I need to be standing for. You'll see there's a little bit of things at the bottom around. A lot of the deciduous trees are starting to grow the senior color, the yellows. And the mountain ash berries are out. The mountain ash trees like over here by the cabin are out. Then you can visit the berries. after we clear through. I bet if you wave to them, they'll wave back. I bet you. They'll throw the switch behind us. That's why we're hesitating here. They hit a button on the post and the switch moves over to these guys. <laughs> now the name on the water tank, Wombeck Tank, means white or white face mountains at Abenaki. Thank you. 
together. Give you guys a nutshell version how the locomotive works. You've got a firebox in that cab, and that's where Adam is shoveling the coal ferociously on the way up, keeping the fire hot and roaring. Heat from the fire passes through a fire tube bundle inside the boiler. Of course, heats the water that surrounds it, boils it, turns it to steam. It rises into the steam dome behind the smokestack on the top of the boiler. Then as the engineer opens the valve, you can send the steam down to the cylinders via the piping you see on the side. In the cylinders, it moves the pistons back and forth, and those are connected to the connecting rods, which turn the gear drive system. Five to one gear reduction. As the gearing is stepped down, it turns the shaft on which the center cog is mounted that propels us forward and up. And they're already all set with the water fill, so you'll see Adam take the hose out, drop that on down. And as soon as they're done, building steam and the inspection will be back underway. One big long wooden trestle elevated off the ground at all times. Sometimes it's not very far off the ground like here next to us and just up ahead it's more of a true looking trestle. About 12 to 15 feet off the ground. Now the highest off the ground our track sits is about 30 feet. And that's on Jacob's ladder trestle. It's also our steepest grade. a little later on. I'll make sure I'll give you a heads up before we cross that section of track. Now, the track has always been built in this manner with the trestling system since our inception for two distinct uh, reasons. Number one is the terrain we have to traverse. The terrain is rugged, it's uneven, rapidly changing features and pitches, and building a track over the ground is easier than putting one directly on top of it with a roadbed. The other reason for this type of track is to help avoid washouts and erosion. The elevated track allows cascading rainwater or snow melt runoff to run beneath it and will divert itself quite conveniently around the trestle footings, leaving them relatively undisturbed. Whereas a roadbed track directly on the ground in ballast would be frequently washed out and compromised by those heavy rains or snow melt.
that is my favorite part of every journey. This is where we finally reach our steepest section of track. It's the world famous Jacob's Ladder Trestle. About half of the trestle has steel vents, which start just up ahead. We were upgraded more recently. Now, crazy as that may seem, we actually have people that walk across this section of track as part of the track inspections. Now, I'm not afraid of heights, but I am afraid of depths and falls. So when I walk across this section of track, I kind of do it in a crab walk. But we have a couple of fearless guys that walk straight up and down.